everybody, it's the VICs to hyphen E, Vic E, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about another nightmare date. But before we get into the video, could you do one little favor, please? Please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get over 100 subscribers by the end of the month. That would really help me build my channel. Thanks in advance. Now, on to the video. Sometimes you do silly things for no good reason. I'm just gonna chalk it up to being young, young and dumb, right? So I met this guy on OkCupid. Fun fact, OkCupid is owned by Match. Match actually owns majority of the online dating platform. So they own Black People Meet, Plenty of Fish, AKA POF. They also own the big giant Tinder. So that's why you see probably a lot of similarities with the platforms or you don't see a lot of differences. And usually many of the match platforms seem to encourage you to continue to be on the platform instead of building long relationships. I think back when I was on OkCupid, okay um, like more because <laughs> I'm still single so I still have a, a profile um when I was back on okay keep it like religiously in a way it really wanted you to engage with others and build relationships but now it's similar to tender where it's just swipe mindless swiping and you have to pay to get more incentives but then other people have to pay and if other people aren't paying then what's the real value there anywho's I was on OkCupid and I met this guy. Now, in his photos, he had like three photos. Two were moshed up. Like, they were like dark and weird and he looked like he might be in a bat cave. And one was kind of good. What I've learned from that is always believe that the person's worst photo is how they really look. So if you wouldn't date them, in their worst photo, then you shouldn't try to date them at all. Anywho, so I was talking to the guy back and forth. He wanted to meet up. I showed my cousin the photo and my cousin was like, give him a chance. In the back of my mind, I was like, well, his photos look kind of weird. But she was like, you know, try it out. You might, you never know. Like this one photo looks good. Now, one out of three is bad odds, right? But I was young, so whatever so we were talking on the phone and he was like let's meet up we could go bowling or something he was saying I was like yeah that sounds so so fun so we were supposed to meet up downtown Brooklyn now and I live close to the downtown Brooklyn area but rule of thumb you never let a guy from online meet you at your home you don't know what's going on there are a lot of crazies you don't want them to know where you live um, this guy, I believe, was coming from the Bronx, and he said he was going to get his cousin's car, drive, somehow his cousin was going to drive him to meet me at, um, downtown Brooklyn, and we were going to go to the bowling alley, which was on 42nd Street. Now, already, this didn't make the most sense, because he was coming from either the Bronx, or maybe even Queens, and he had to drive to Brooklyn. Why not just meet me at the bowling alley in Manhattan? because the Bronx is closer to Manhattan. And in ways, you can get from Queens to Manhattan to 42nd Street. It's kind of a central location. Um, but he said his cousin was coming this way, and so he should come to Brooklyn. And then something happened to his cousin's car. Midway, he wanted to meet me at my house. Now, I felt that was odd, but I said, okay, cool, no problem. You can come meet me at my house. Yo, I was young and dumb. I don't know why I did that. That totally didn't make any sense when I look back at it now, but back then I was dumb. That same day, my grandfather was actually at my house and he was waiting outside. Like my grandfather, he's from originally from Kentucky. So he was waiting outside with a chair, just sitting there like on a poke, on a poach, on a poach, on the porch, just like chilling, like, you know, looking around, right? And um, the guy comes up, so my grandfather yells to me. Mind you, that day I had on, I, I can kind of remember, I had on a blue sparkly cami 
from H&M. It was like a cami shirt um, with green lace and then some green je jeans to match the green trim lace. So it was blue with green trim lace and green pants. Then I had a weave back then um, and I put it like, it was kind of swooped to the side, like I had swooped it up to the side, whatever. So I, you know, I felt I looked really cute that day. I came out and um, the guy had some scars, like, like he had gotten a fight with like his baby moms like like some claw marks on his face and he said his cat had scraped up his face i don't know if this is true i don't know if he got in a fight with his baby moms and that's why he was coming to visit me who knows but he had came and he looked a little rough around the edges and my grandfather was like um victoria you got a guest down here for you and my grandfather just gave him like a once over looked him up and down um and then i said you know bye grandpa and i was off my way with this guy who looked a little strange who had just met me in my house i know that's dumb but sometimes you know i told you i'm a little shit so um we're walking all the way from my house to downtown brooklyn so we have some time to chat so while we're walking he goes wow your hair you know pretty much your hair looks messed up you shouldn't do your hair like that now, to be honest, back then, people weren't wearing, like, full lace front wigs back then. I'm really not a huge fan of wearing a wig like that. Like, my comfortability, I still have trauma from when I was younger about my hat being pulled off. So, the wig always would scare me to wear it out in public. Like, so, I had, a, I had did my own weave. And, yes, my hair was a little busty. You know, I didn't use a gel control like maybe I should have. But my hair has always been like a little troubled at times. So, and it was perm back then too. So it, was, it always had been troubled. So I did have some flyaways. You know, I tried to do the best that I could do. But when I looked him up and down, aside from the cat scratches that he had on his face, he had a hunchback. Yeah, a hunchback. Like Esmeralda, Notre Dame, all of that. Um, and you know, my hair is a sensitive point. And so I was being a little petty at this point, I know, but he talked about my hair. So I said, so what's up with your back though? He was like, oh, you know, I work out a lot. So my back looks like this. And I'm looking like, yo, I never saw somebody who worked out so much have a hunchback. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe it was a strain to his back. Maybe he did work out so much. But the fact that he already told me about this cat scratches, he had to come to my house for some reason, and now he's talking about my hair, I kind of don't believe that he worked out too much, and that's why he has a hunchback. But I just kept on walking to the train station to go bowling with him on 42nd Street. So we walk downtown, you know, I try to get past that. I'm just like, relax, relate, release, Victoria, it's not that serious. You know, you can still make it through this day. You can still go out with him. So I go, so, so we get on the train and we're like talking. This is midday. Um, we're on the train. There's not a lot of people on the train at this time. It was like midday, I think it might be a week or maybe it was a week and I don't even know, but we were on the train and he was asking me, so what do you think about me? Now, I'm somebody who, I'll compliment you on a, I can compliment you on a surface level and say, oh, you're so attractive. But really, I love to get to know somebody. And then I get to compliment them and say, wow, I really re noticed this about you. When I'm really in like with them, like I know them as a person and I like them and I find them attractive, not just externally, but internally. Like sometimes someone could look good, but be a douche. So who cares? So he was like, oh, so, you know, and, and for me, I don't fish for compliments. You know, maybe if I dated you, I'd be like, oh, what do you think about this? Maybe that's more of your opinion, but I don't go out of my way to go be like, so what do you think about how I look today? Or do you think I look fat? It's like, if I look fat, I look fat. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You know, there's so many guys who will love it. So, um, if, especially if you don't really want to know the answer, don't ask. If you feel sexy, then you sexy. 
and and I think that's something I've worked on um, my whole life to, to kind of work on feeling confident in who I am and how I look and I know what I like to look like Anywho, so he was like so um, so what do you think about me like how do you feel about me yo dude you didn't give me anything to feel anything about and you already talked about my hair um, which is a big insecurity for me which you don't know yet because you don't know me but <sighs> didn't your mama teach you better than that I guess not so I said well you know and I was trying to be my nice self like sometimes I could be so honest it's hurtful and so I've worked on ways to not be hurtful to people and to instead try to work around it so I said well you know some some people's trash is another person's treasure I don't want to say anything negative about you um, but I'm not sure if you're you know for me and so then he was mad um, and we just sat on the train pretty much silent until we got to 42nd Street to the bowling alley so now we're at the bowling alley mind you I realized that I'm not into him he said some offensive things he asked the treasure trash thing and was upset when I gave him a real answer and we really don't have a good connection so I'm kind of really over him but I'm still nice so I stay on the date do you see a pattern with this other story, the last story that I shared? I stay on dates even when I know it's not going right. I don't want to just like up and leave somebody. Unless I feel um, um, like unsafe, I pretty much stay on the date because it's polite. Um, and I, I, I don't know if I've worked past that, but I hope I have because it's stupid and dumb. We got to the bowling alley and we get our shoes and stuff and I pay for myself. One of the rules I have is if I'm not interested in a guy, I don't allow them to pay. Because once you allow them to pay, it's like you sign some magic contract um, and they feel obligated to something and or they feel that you use them. And I don't want to use someone for a date. I could pay for my own dates, I could do my own things and if I couldn't pay, I'll just stay home and watch YouTube. It's cool. I don't need you to take me out. I don't want to waste your time or my time, and my time is valuable. I value my own personal time, right? And spending time with you on mindless dribble is stupid, so I wouldn't do it. Um, anywho, I, I'd rather spend time with someone I enjoy, even if it's doing something simple and they didn't pay for it. So. I go to bowling alley and I, I decide to pay for myself and I you know he pays for himself and we bowl and there's a group of guys and they're looking at me like yo what's up what's good and they look at him like ew you're with him and I just have to be polite I can't flirt with the guys I can't look at the guys because I'm on a hey so I just bowl and so at this time we're having fun because I'm, my competitive nature is coming out we're bowling we're having fun um, and then the game ends um, and I and at the time like when you're having fun with someone for a moment you kind of forget like all the negative things like I'm not thinking about all the negative things that happen so he now is um, so now we're at the end of the day in 42nd Street it's the, the bowling alley is actually in the Port Authority so he's now going back to where he came from through the train or wherever but because he I think he wasn't originally from the Bronx he was visiting his cousin that was part of the story um, because he really wasn't from New York he wanted to go to get like a good drink and he was like so where is a good drink where can I get something blah 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 I was like well actually you know if you want a big like drink you go to BBQ's because BBQ's has these really like Bahama Mamas and different drinks that you can get and taste and you would really like that and so he was like oh, okay cool 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 when he's about to leave he goes so you want to come with me to go get a drink and I'm like nah I, I just want to go home Mind you, I paid for myself during the day at the bowling alley. Why well, do I want to spend more time with you? I told you the trash and treasure thing that you didn't like. You talked about my hair. I, you know, all these things, but now you still want to go get a drink with me? I wasn't up to it. So I told him, no, um, I, I don't want to get a drink. I just want to go home. I have some things to do. 
And so then he said, Well, you're such a B. I mean, he said, You're such a B. And I looked at him and I said, What? After all the time I spent with you, you dare say that to me? Whatever. I mean, I didn't say that, but I said some other choice words to him. Um, like, whatever. I don't got time for this. So I left um, that day and I was like, you know what? That dude was so ungrateful. I spent all this time with him. I wasn't even into him. And then he called me a B after that. And it definitely taught me a lesson. And I think the lesson I learned was look at the signs. Back to the photo. When you see three photos and only one is good, know that they look like the worst photo. And always... I guess respect yourself enough to lead the day and I'm really hoping that I've learned that lesson like respect your own time don't waste time with people who don't deserve your time and after that he obviously a lot of men they still like to call you again regardless if they do something wrong regardless if they curse you out regardless if the date went terrible when they get bored late at night and they can't sleep, they want to hit you up. So he hit me up and asked that I want to go on another date or something. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Um, I, I told him, I, I, you know what I do? Know how to shut somebody down by phone. Like I could talk to you on the phone. I, could, I think I could do it in person too. Like I know how to shut someone down and tell them like, I'm not interested in the politest and nicest way. So I told him, I'm not interested in you. And he never hit me up again. And maybe he did, but I, I probably lost that phone. So, whatever. Guys, that's the end of this nightmare date. And I will share more stories with you soon. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me it, what you would have done differently. Tell me if you would have stayed on the date, if you would have left when he came to your house and met your grandfather. Um, if after he told you your hair looked crazy, you leave him alone. Or would you have just like wanted to fight him when he called you a uh, you-know-what? I'll chat with you guys later. Peace.